With that said, we're going to jump into the final fireside chat of 20, 2016. Um, I want to read a little bit about Brad Dugdale. Should I read your bio or should no. I just talk about you? I, I'm just going to talk about Brad for a second. If you don't know who Brad Dugdale is, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, it's the truth. Um, so I, I met Brad Dugdale when I moved back to Coeur d'Alene and I kept uh, getting told I should meet Brad and Brad and I kind of connected because Brad has an uncanny sense of seeing where progress will happen and then he helps open doors and makes it happen. And he has proven that not only when he first moved here and saw Coeur d'Alene as a new resident and said, this could be an all-American city. <laughs> And everyone went, well, what's an all-American city? And well, Brad said, well, this is how they get the designation, and we should make that happen in Coeur d'Alene. And I think it was within two years? One year. Within one year, Coeur d'Alene had this national designation, which is a big deal to be an all-American city. And he pulled it off and rallied the community around this cause. He's continued to go on to be a key player, not only at the Hayden Lake Country Club, you're the two-time past president there at the Hayden Lake Country Club. You uh, sit on the foundation board for North Idaho College to help them make the monies uh, to keep great things happening there, basically. Give scholarships, build buildings, do all the amazing stuff, like the 100,000... 110,000. Sorry, I, 110, I lost 10,000. 110,000 square foot facility that's out on the prairie, which I don't know a single junior college in the United States that has a facility like that. And it's already full. And it's already full. Um, Brad was very pivotal in helping make that campus happen. Uh, you've been involved not only with that, but then D.A. Davidson, you're, you're a partner at D.A. Davidson, one of the two partners there, correct? Um, well, anyway, <clears throat> Darren Hayes and I have a business partnership inside D.A. Davidson. A business partnership, yeah. and, and uh, you've been listed on the Barons list, I believe. Is that not a, a myth? Yeah, that's true. That's true which basically means he helps other people make the money. He's really good. Uh, <laughs> so Brad, Brad is just a sharp reader, a great thinker, and has quickly become a mentor and a friend of mine as well, and a friend of the Innovation Collective. Uh, we work on this a lot and talk about it a lot. And tonight, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about some really interesting tech trends that have happened in 2016. Uh, on a national level and then also on a local level. And then we're going to talk about some interesting predictions for 2017 that we believe are going to happen nationally and things that we believe are going to happen locally in 2017. Uh, it, with that said, I, I even put it into an email, keep in mind how you are going to engage with 2017 because it's coming. And this month, people disengage and they kind of fall off the rails. They just hang out with family, which isn't a bad thing, but what I'm saying is while everyone else is sitting on their, their flat-footed, be on your toes thinking about how you're going to tackle 2017 aggressively. So let's start with 2016 kind of nationally. What did you find interesting in 2016? All the books you read, all the things you digested, what were the big things that jumped out to you? So Nick, I'm going to go backwards just a little bit. You know, I... Anyways, I started interacting with Nick and started thinking about, you know, what this uh, wonderful thing, the Innovation Collective, is. You know, I kind of harken back to, um, you know, Coeur d'Alene. Now, some people have been here a lot longer than I. I've been here for almost 30 years. And I can remember when I first came to town, it was a resource-based economy. I mean, it really was. We had mining, we had agriculture and timber. And, uh, and, and, and some some great leaders in this town could see that that wasn't going to keep us going. And they formed this wonderful thing called Jobs Plus, which was a really big deal. I think it was back in 1987, 1988. And they rallied the community and they went out there and said, you know what, we need to diversify our job base. I mean, we just need to because, you know, these other industries are going away. And, you know, my hat's off to them. I mean, I think, uh, you know, Dwayne Hagedon was part of that, uh, Dennis Wheeler, uh, uh, Tom Richards. Uh, I know Charlie Nips in the room. I know Charlie's got it, has his fingerprints on lots of things. And I got to tell you what, I mean, that was a huge step in this community. And it's just made a big, big difference. And then this guy, Nick, comes along. 
you know, because I still think, you know, jobs plus mission is still really, really important. And, um, you know, and, and, and so is the chamber and a lot of the great things that we have. But then, you know, as I say, Nick comes along and, you know, it's, it's probably time to reframe again. And I really think that's what Nick and the collective have done. So what, we, what I really sense going on now is it's not so much about, you know, just bringing new jobs to the area. Now it's really about innovating, collaborating, I mean, the great thing about Coeur d'Alene is there have been thousands of just brilliant people that live here, but there's never really been a forum to interact. And, and really, that's what the collective's doing now, right? I mean, you know, what, we, what we've done is we just said, well, great, let's have coffee and concepts. You know, let's have a fireside chat. Let's bring, you know, some dynamic people together because I promise you, if you spend enough time with dynamic people and you can feel that energy about it, guess what, you know, magic's gonna happen. And so as we're reflecting a little bit, and you know, <laughs> I don't know, I read the newspaper, you know, this was in the spokesman this week, American dream collapsing for our youth. American dream <laughs> collapsing, I'm sitting there going. It's a very positive article. Isn't it? It's a great headline. Saying like, you know, <laughs> will your kids ever be able to, you know, do as well as your parents? And I'm just sitting there going, you know, well that's bunk. Yeah. I mean, we're better than that. I mean, no, we are. We're better than that. And so, well, we are. You know, and so, so when, I, when I look at this, and, and Nick and I have talked about this a little bit, you know, this isn't just some funny thing. This is a movement. This is a movement. Mm -hmm. And if we sit there and, and we continue to work on these strategies and, and we continue to communicate and collaborate and network, I mean, there's a lot of magic that's gonna, that's, that will happen in this community. Well, uh, real quick before we jump into the things of 2016 that are really interesting, it is collapsing for the youth, just to be honest. The difference though is it's also one of the most amazing times to be alive. There's more opportunity right now, there's more of a land grab happening, and there's more to participate in and shifts that are going to change industries forever, but it's a matter of how do you engage, how do you find a seat on the bus a lot of people don't understand. And that's where we are better than that, and our kids will have incredible opportunities my, my mind is exploding at the opportunities that my kids are gonna have. But many kids in many communities and many cities do not know how to engage. That's the real difference. Because for many people, it will collapse. Um, it's funny, as Simplot talks about it often, is that they went from running these massive potato factories with thousands and thousands of employees, to now they're down to hundreds and they run with an iPad. Um, a lot has changed and it's gonna continue to change. So uh, on, on that piece, 2016, Something I saw that I thought was incredibly interesting that I want to touch on. The first autonomous delivery of beer was made. Yeah. <laughs> For, and it sounds silly, um, but, but put this in perspective. One of the number one jobs in the United States, it's trucking, transportation. And uh, it's called Auto. Uber, uh, it's a subsidiary of Uber called Auto, and they have a fleet of autonomous semis. And someone sat behind the wheel most of the time. There was a video of him getting up and walking around the cab and going to the back, but never once touched the wheel. It got from point A to point B. Someone still had to unload it, but it caused this massive controversy. There were all these truck drivers who then started saying, oh, this is, it's a professional job. This will never happen. You know, it, they don't understand the nuances of it. And I saw an article, I believe it was in the Times, that said truck drivers believe they're about 30 to 40 years away from being replaced from behind the wheel. That's the, that's the consensus in the industry by the driver. And I get it, when things change, it's scary, right? But I will guarantee you, we are two to five years max from this happening. And I just heard our governor in our state say, we need to hire more truck drivers. <laughs> and we need to find a way to get them fired up. Guys, that was a big one in 2016 and it shouldn't go unnoticed. Well, and, and Nick, uh, you know, the other day when you and I were having coffee, um, I mean, we talk about AI, artificial intelligence. And the other day, I mean, great headline. I mean, Watson, the computer, saved somebody's life in India. 
you know, if you think about what Watson did, remember we had Mark Cochran, was it Mark? Uh, no, 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 Mark from... Um, Boudreau. Boudreau. Boudreau, yeah. Catholic Moon. No, but, but think about that. You know, what, what Watson can do is it can sit there and pull all this data, you know, at one point and then bring it to this point where if a human was trying to do the same thing, I mean, there's just no possible way to do that. I mean, and, and uh, I mean, Watson's just getting started. I mean, just getting started. And to think that it started with chess, right? People remember playing chess? And, and now it's making cocktails, it's making recipes, it's saving lives, it's, it's diagnosing cancer, and it's doing this all in parallel at the same time. And it's getting faster and better and analyzing data quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. Um, we're gonna see it used to where you'll be able to tap into Watson, I think, very easily, and use it for your own functions in your own life. It can analyze all of your financial data for every transaction you've ever made, every purchase you've ever made at Safeway. Um, interesting things are coming there. Another, another interesting one, in 2016, do you realize we landed a rocket back on Earth for the first time ever? Again, another interesting moment, another big first. We had a spaceship take off and then come back. Multiple companies pulled that off this year. Not just one, multiple, and they're private companies. This isn't a government-funded project. That's another weird one to sit back and realize. We just lived through that together uh, and realizing where does this catalyze next. We're, we're fortunate to have Bert um, in our town, Bert Rutan. He's the godfather of private space travel. And what that thing has kicked off now, watching, you know, we brought up another one, um, that there are private companies trying to mine the moon in 2016. There's a race to do that in <laughs> right now, and there's a guy in Seattle that I know that he's a part of one of them, his name is Naveen Jain. He's talked about coming over to do a summit with us, but he leads a leading US company that's trying to mine the moon. Uh, so another weird one where we're seeing minerals. Um, you know, I, I would also say in 2016, and, and I, I often share with, uh, with people when I start describing Coeur d'Alene, um, there's a shift going on, and I often say that people have, you can either have your old Coeur d'Alene glasses or your new Coeur d'Alene glasses. And, and I would tell you this, if, if people went and analyzed the speakers at the Think Big Festival, I mean, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm amazed that there are 10,000 people, I mean, I'm, I'm serious, 10, I mean, the, the last two or three years, you know, that, I mean, seriously, go pull up the resumes of these people. They're here in this town. I mean, and, and, and we already have, you know, a halfway decent lineup for this next year, but why people aren't sitting there? there I mean, why there aren't 5,000 people at Think Big? I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm just amazed at the quality of the people, and, and then, you know, what Nick and the team do, they get them in a room and they start brainstorming together. I mean, you, you know, listen, I, I know there are a lot of smart people in the Trump Tower today, but I'll tell you what, there's a lot of smart people here in Coeur d'Alene at the Think Big Festival. Yeah, we had them at the White House this year too. So. I know, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's even better. Take that, Trump Tower. Um, <laughs> no, I, hashtag Trump Tower. Yeah, hashtag Trump Tower. Um, that's a good point, just to, to hit on that. You should go back through and look at some of the speakers and think about those of the people who now have an endearing feel for our town. They care about a lot of you. It's weird to watch. Um, they, they come here to speak and then they fall in love with the town and the people. And then they start mentoring the companies. Uh, I've been watching it. Uh, Starship Technologies, who remembers that company? That's one for 2016 uh, that we we're gonna talk about a crazy thing that happened in our lifetime again. I, have, I wore their shirt tonight. Like the little, uh, little robots that were running around town here, right? Oh, yeah. um, the, these guys, Starship, they came to Coeur d'Alene because of the laws we passed. We're the first city in the universe to protect robots on public property. And they came here. We're now, I, I'm an investor with Mountain Man Ventures and their company now. And they're founded by the guys who started a little company called Skype. And they saw another opportunity to build a logistics platform to deliver kind of lightweight items, three bags of groceries across high density cities. And instead of trying to use drones and navigate everywhere, let's use the ground, which is already has infrastructure for it. And let's get these robots running on sidewalks and streets. 
They're live in Paris, they're delivering food. We watched the first ever delivery of food autonomously happen in the United States this year. And again, you lived for that. You lived through that moment where a robot left a restaurant, took the meal on its own, ran down a sidewalk in a street in San Francisco, and it alerted a woman's cell phone inside that she didn't even know was happening, came out, and there was her food in this little robot that went boop, and like pops open. And we're in a crazy time right now to be alive in 2016, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, it's, it's pretty neat. I, I wanna jump into, just for the sake of time, because I know we'll do this forever, Brad. But, I know. Um, <laughs> let's, let's talk about some recaps here in 2016 that you thought were interesting. Well, I, um, so in 2016, um, listen, I, I don't think we could talk enough about this 110,000 square foot uh, building on the prairie. I mean, uh, my gosh, um, you know, that, that, well, anyway, it's a $5 million project. And, uh, you know, I mean, the, the community raised. I mean, there were some other people. And, and my hat's off to the trustees. I know the foundation gets a lot of credit for that. There were some trustees out there that stuck their neck out, and they really deserve most of the credit. I mean, we, we kind of do the stuff at the end and make, you know, all look good. But, you know, those people that made that decision. But, but I'm going to tell you what. I mean, that's a foundational moment. That building is configured so that it's flexible to change in the future. You know, so we're talking about aerospace, robotics, I mean, all that sort of stuff. I mean, now, you know, we have a lot of welding and, and you know, other, other things that are very valuable in our economy, but, but the shift that that thing can make is just absolutely dramatic. I mean, that is a big, big win for this community. Yeah, and, and to piggyback off that, for the first time ever in Coeur d'Alene, you can get your four-year degree in computer science working towards getting your master's and your PhD all in this town in computer science. And they're pushing it towards an emphasis on robotics. The professor, one of the professors has come from a DOD um, company he ran. He was a professor at University of Memphis, a 200 million plus department that he ran, $200 million a year in DOD funding for AI. And now he moved to Coeur d'Alene because he came to the Think Big Festival and now he's been running his AI department up here, and U of I was looking for a professor, and he said, well, that'd be fun, let's do it. And so now he's there with all these backed up DOD grants in the area of AI. Um, the CS program up here now between NIC and University of Idaho already has more, more CS students in it that are dedicated to that pathway than first year students that are dedicated to CS down in Moscow. <laughs> We have the population up there, we have the hunger for it, we have a whole culture and community around it. That's big, that happened this year. Um, I was gonna jump into another one because we're kinda talking buildings. Mm -hmm. I was just gonna yeah. go straight to the den. <laughs> um, 2016, recap, we bought the den. Uh, myself and two other partners, we bought, <laughs> we'll clap to that. And we, we bought a building that um, had been sitting for over 26 years. Downtown, Coeur d'Alene right in the heart of downtown. And it's, when we're done, gonna be 34,000 square feet, have over 40 little, op, like, cube, not, I don't wanna call them cubes, they're awesome offices, like chalkboard wall, bright white wall, cool glass walls, um, high-speed fiber internet in there, um, coffee shop that has two back-to-back, -back, if you know anything about coffee, two back-to-back -back custom-made Slayer machines, under-counter espresso uh, machines, a robot arm that's gonna <coughs> hand coffee, the fireplace clad in uh, steel. Uh, we'll have three large anchor tenant spaces, the private club in the basement called The Lair. I mean, it is gonna be awesome. We're gonna be hosting fireside chats in that building next year. We're gonna have events in that building next year. Uh, so pretty cool thing that I'm excited about that happened in 2016 was watching that partnership come together and the team to say, let's do this thing. And let's make this an economic leap forward for the town, uh, another spot where the conversation can continue to happen and where kids can learn, be inspired, walk in there. We've already discussed with a lot of the early companies that have been building new tech that's taking off in this town. And we've shared with them, we want your earliest prototypes to put on the walls because we want people to see the crap work you did. <laughs> <laughs> 
so that when kids go in there, they can see that's really what they started with. <laughs> because really, it takes failure, it takes hard work, and that's what this thing is going to be a monument to, is that effort, the growth, and the community coming together to build something of significance, just like that building. Um, so, exciting things happening there. You know, and no different than, uh, you know, being blessed to be an all-American city uh, back in 1990, you might add a little color that uh, Google decided that we were, what kind of city? We are, we're one of the digital capitals of the United States, so they have an economic report that comes out each year. And in 2016, they uh, dedicated Coeur d'Alene as one of the digital capitals of the United States on the E-Cities economic report, which is pretty rad. And they specifically uh, identified Innovation Collective as one of the key catalysts of that, and our Red Lake. So, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, one other thing that's kind of near and dear to my heart um, is, uh, you know, and I've been talking to Nick about this for a while, and we uh, co-created with uh, Kip this whole leadership academy. And uh, man, uh, you know, we've been kind of working on that some time. We actually ran, you know, 40 or 50 people through the leadership academy starting last September. Yep. And, uh, you know, I don't want to speak for the people that went through. I, I can just tell you that as a, as a, a person who ran one of the groups, um, we went eight weeks in a row talking about topics that can really help change people's lives. And I, I, it's hard for me to express how motivating that is um, because a lot of us you know, have a dream inside of us and it's hard to get it out. And so the whole concept behind you know, the Leadership Academy was to help people kind of identify you know, what some of those dreams are, you know, understand some key tenets you know, in uh, you know, in categories that can impact your life, but more importantly, create a platform to where, you know, guess what? You feel, you know, that, that, that uh, I don't know, that passion inside to actually, you know, kind of make something happen. And, you know, uh, you, there again, um, uh, I, I think that in itself is amazing. Uh, we, we did a recap with Kip uh, a while back and when we were kind of doing the recap, because every time we do a, an academy, the goal here is not, you know, the goal is to keep making it better. So mm -hmm. we feel like every time we run one, it's a beta test, yep. you know, because we can figure out a better way to make it, and make it more pertinent, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, you know, in, in conclusion, we're saying, you know, we don't want just 40 or 50 people. <clears throat> we want 5,000 people. Yep. You know, I mean, I want 10,000. I mean, wouldn't it be cool to be in a town where 10 or 15,000 people all have the same kind of language. I mean, where they're, you know, just kind of on purpose. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we share some concepts, and this isn't, you know, Tony Robbins and all this. This is really designed just to, you know, help people, you know, just understand some of the platforms. We talk about mind chatter, you know. I mean, oftentimes it's yourself that holds yourself back, you know, and so how can we diminish the mind chatter so that you don't, do that because you know if you think about in life you know you're gonna have the fear of regret that you never went out and did anything you know or the fear of failure you know and 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 we're trying to say hey guess what the fear of failure is the is the better place to be yeah. I mean absolutely I, I agree and, and it's fun the great a what Brad and Kip uh, what we all collaborate on put together it focuses on family money um, your community, and not only has the first 50 people gone through, and we're starting it again with the collective in January, I think, uh -huh. um, but we also have signed up our first corporate partner that wants us to take their whole executive team through it, and then all their staff, which is 80 different employees. So it's starting to work its way into the community uh, in a pretty cool way. Uh, something else I wanted to touch on for the town before we jump into 2017. I don't know if you know this, but we launched a book in Coeur d'Alene that became a New York Times bestseller together. Anybody realize that? Anybody? At Think Big Festival this year, when you had Julian Guthrie here, which it's become one of our books um, that we have for the club, and uh, we have autographed, thanks, this one. Um, it's not, we, we have the autographed nameplates, but from Peter Diamandis, who's the creator of XPRIZE, we have autographs from Eric Lindbergh, who's the pilot who flew this, which you, if you've never seen the documentary called Dark Sky, it's awesome. It's on YouTube. 
they flew, they had to go to space, I think it was twice in a week. The first time they went to space, awesome. Second time, none of the panels worked. <laughs> none of the gauges. And they just went to space without I don't know, a speedometer maybe. I don't know what they even had in that thing. Like, they were speeding on the way to space. <laughs> so they could have got pulled over and Eric was like, I'm going. Um, but Eric autographed these books and then Julian, uh, so Peter, Eric, and Julian, but they launched this book here. She had never talked about it publicly until she came to Think Big and launched it here in our town. A bunch of people bought books here. There's a big competition around it. It's now on the New York Times bestseller list. That's kind of cool that someone came to our town to launch something so significant and so big. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, 2017. Let's make some crazy predictions. And then we're going to have some Q&A at the end. Crazy predictions for 2017 in tech. Go. Well, um, my favorite crazy prediction is, you know, I, I think this Internet of Things, you know, if you don't understand what IoT is, it is a big deal. In fact, I think I put a post on Facebook today, you start adding AI and IoT. Uh, in fact, I've got the Zach's report here. They figure that this year the Internet of Things is going to connect 22 billion different devices. In the next four years, it'll connect over 50 billion devices. I mean, it is, it is one of the fastest growing areas, and it's very subtle. I mean, it's on your phones. I mean, Nest, mm -hmm. you know, where you can sit there, well, guess what? I can change the temperature in my house. Yeah. So, Internet of Things. Um, I think 2017, we are going to watch the first autonomous vehicle be available for the public, fully autonomous, so no safety driver. Uh, today, they launched in San Francisco Uber, finally, well not Uber, but Uber with the autonomous cars. For the first time, it was done in San Francisco today. And what that means, they've been doing it in Pittsburgh already, but it means that they have a professional driver, I mean someone with a license, by the way. <laughs> It's been a job that you get paid a premium for at Google and on, on Uber. You sit behind the wheel and make sure the vehicle doesn't hit anything. That's it. And they're not touching the wheel, guys. <laughs> they've, been, they've logged, I can't remember how many millions and millions of miles now with what's called Waymo. Waymo is the Google self-driving car. It got launched as its own company like two days ago. It's getting very serious right now. And this year, 20, or next year, 2017, my prediction, there's going to be a car and a city that you can grab your remote control to life and ask for a car and it's gonna show up and no one's in it. <laughs> Hit me with another one. Okay, so I, I probably won't do this justice, but VR, virtual reality. If, if, <laughs> so my son, my youngest son, he's, he's a pretty serious gamer. I mean, my gosh, if you saw the TV, the Xbox, the PlayStation, the this or that, I mean, he's got the VR headset. He's got a special chair where you watch the VR. And so I was recently over at his place and he put the goofy thing on me and holy cow. I mean, the first thing he did, I mean, there's this whole thing where you go underneath the sea and, I mean, seriously, the sounds, the lights, the colors, I mean, it, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I mean, literally, there's a shark that comes out and attacks you and rips the shark cage. I mean, it is so hard not to move because you kind of know it's not real, but it doesn't feel that way to you inside, and it's just crazy. Who's done VR or AR? Who's had an experience? Yeah. Well, and then the other thing, I mean, you want to talk about disruption. And, and listen, I'd love to get a bunch of people in the room and talk about this because, uh, so the next thing, I mean, we go to with this boxing match. And, you know, you're not in the first row. I mean, you're right there in the match. I mean, and, you know, you just sit there. I mean, and, and, and you know, so these guys are going at it, and you're, you're right there. I mean, I, I, I'm going to tell you something, uh, the ability to go to a concert and sit in the first mm -hmm. row, I mean, the ability, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to flip some models upside down and very quickly. I mean, you know, you want to talk about disrupt something? Yep. 
it's going to disrupt some things so fast. I mean, I, I, I don't even know that we know how much it's going to disrupt. To piggyback off the VR, I'll predict that in 2017, we will see our first VR startup in Coeur d'Alene. Um, I know that there's like three or four of you that keep talking about it, and one of you, it's going to bite you, the bug, and you're going to go for it. So it's one of them. Uh, there's one guy who's been obsessed with it for years. He's a great engineer, and he keeps talking about it, keeps talking about it, keeps talking about it. One of them is going to jump in 2017 because it's too sexy not to right now. Like It is the wild west of what's going to happen in how we get information and education. You name it, it's going to hit every type of data consumption that you could think of. Education will never be the same. I am so sad I went to school when I did. <laughs> like, I just think about what they're going to get to experience. I, I did a VR experience at Singularity University where I went through a horror film in a wheelchair. Um, and it was surreal. I panicked. I, and I don't get scared. And I wasn't scared of the people grabbing my wheelchair, but it had haptics. The wheelchair shaking. And when I first got into it, it was this... Like they had hired models to like stand behind you, so you get in and there's like these models in a nurse's outfit that's like standing there smiling like, well, hi, and she's like pretending she's pushing this like white wheelchair, and then you sit down and all of a sudden you hear this growl behind you. You look back and it's like a seven foot eight big man who's like, oh, everything's different. And then as they push you, they tried pushing me down the stairs at one point. Like I'm trying to grab the wall and there's nothing there. And I consider myself a fairly sane human. I mean, it, it's weird. If you haven't experienced it, it's weird. So there will be in 2017 a VR company in Coeur d'Alene, I guarantee it. Not that I know that there is one or not. Um, secondarily, um, to jump back to 2016 and then jump to 2017, 2016, we had over $6 million invested in startups in Coeur d'Alene, in North Idaho. If you didn't know that. I think in 2017, kind of looking back at the island here, I think we're going to crest 10 million. I think we'll watch that happen in this region uh, because there's a lot of interesting things that are continuing to bubble and grow. Um, and people taking note locally as well as nationally and internationally. Well, um, so I'm probably going to jump a little bit forward, you know. So, so anyway. <laughs> As Nick knows, I read a lot. I mean, if I had a wish for the city, um, I wish every citizen would read this book called The Inevitable by Kevin Kelly. Now, I don't know if you know who Kevin Kelly is, but Kevin Kelly was at the forefront of the internet. Just to give you a little heads up, um, he was consulting, you know, ABC, and he said, do you realize that ABC.com is not taken? You know, can you run down to your IT guy and get abc.com? And guess what? They didn't and ended up paying through the nose for it, okay? But literally, this book talks about the 12 technological forces that are going forward. I will tell you, this is, I mean, this is a look into the future for the next 30 years. And Nick, this is one of the books that we're gonna yes. definitely roll out next year. At the club, um, if you remember the collective, this is one of the books that we're gonna make sure everyone reads. And we're working on trying to get a hold of Kevin to see if he'll get engaged somehow. Please do not take what I'm saying lightly. It's a good book. This is an awesome book, an yeah. awesome book. And on, on that point too, um, just to kind of touch on the club, it's a ra uh, rabbit trail, tangent maybe. Um, April, we do have another author coming in, New York Times bestseller, uh, Nelly Galan. She's the past president of Telemundo. Um, she runs a commercial real estate company. She's an advisor to Coca-Cola and Walmart. And she also produced the show, does anybody remember the show, The Swan? She's a television producer. It's, it's still the highest grossing reality show that's ever been on Fox. Um, and she's awesome. Just a great woman and a, a personal friend of mine. And she's committed to flying up here for a few days and is gonna spend some time at the club to do some mentorship and then do a big forum where she focuses on empowerment of uh, kind of underserved communities. Because let's be honest, um, the Hispanic community, um, women, are oftentimes both of those communities that sometimes get overlooked. And if we can continue to engage and activate that in our own town, along with everyone else, we win. And so she's gonna come out and talk a lot about her book called Self Made, New York Times bestseller. 
and um, she'll be here in April, April 8th. Very nice. Uh, for a few days. Uh, la last thing I want to talk about for 2017 that's going to be a prediction that's going to happen. Um, most robots I've seen suck. They're not awesome. Like, if you look at most robots, they're function, right? Like they do something very like predictable. The Roomba runs around your, your yard or your, not your yard, unless you're really weird and have a carpet yard. Um, but they do have a, a, they actually have a robotic, um, they have a robotic lawnmower. And did you know the number one uh, seller of that in the Northwest is in Coeur d'Alene? So more people are buying robotic lawnmowers here than anywhere else in the Northwest. That's pretty nerdy. Um, but most robots are basic function. In 2017, I predict you will see the first truly scary robot. The, the merger of real AI and ability to sense, think, um, speak rapidly, interact and assess things very quickly that has multi-function that makes me go, oh, and it's going to happen next year. I don't know anybody working on it. I just sense it and feel it. There's too many things going on. Uh, if you haven't seen this, uh, Google acquired a company called DeepMind, and they've been working on this for a while. DeepMind has been evaluating languages. Uh, of different cultures and how to analyze it in real time. The AI systems have created their own language and they're sending messages back and forth and no one can decrypt them. <laughs> so a friend, he posted that and said, start storing the money under your mattress now. <laughs> but uh, I don't know what it means. I just think for the first time, it could be well-intentioned, this functional robot and what they build and, and what it can do. But I think it's going to cause us all to go, that could go sideways real fast. Um, so welcome to that fun prediction. <laughs> um, you know, Nick, one, one, one other that I would add, and in fact, uh, I was just introduced to a guy who has a 3D printer from NIC. Um, but I will tell you this. So 3D printing reminds me a little bit like when the PC first came out, like in the early 80s. Everyone saw one, they were cool, but no one knew what the hell to do with them. And, and I think that's kind of where 3D printing is. But guess what? HP and GE is in there in a big way. Continuous composites? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, I'm just telling you what. It's the, it's, it's the next wave, too. You want to talk about mm -hmm. disrupting VR, just think about digitally downloading you know, an image anywhere and then just basically printing it right there on the spot. I mean, it's function. That it is function. Lo locally, um, I'm going to make a few quick predictions about 2017, and then we probably should do some questions. Are you okay with that? So I'm just going to blow through these. I think locally in 2017, we will watch a company in our region sell for over $100 million. Let's see if I'm right or wrong. I'll put my money on black. I think it's going to happen in 2017. I think we will break 100 students in the computer science program in 2017. I think we will see a, a substantially closer collaboration between weird experimental education efforts like Gizmo and what they're doing and higher education and the public system and innovation collective. We're gonna watch it all sync up together because it has to. I think we will also see for the first time in Idaho, I know a lot of people are working on different efforts. Um, I think we're gonna see a venture capital fund that crests over $30 million in Idaho somewhere in 2017. There's a lot happening across the state from Boise, North Idaho, Sandpoint, all over that there's a lot of um, fervor and it's not a bubble, it's massive disruption. And people are sobering up in the state and figuring out how to latch onto it. Um, plus we're gonna see some awesome people at Think Big Fest in 2017, so that's another thing. Um, kind of the la last thing I wanna say before we open it up for questions, um, This organization exists with one purpose. I'll tell the story of why we started Innovation Collective. People are awesome. I don't know if you've ever seen those videos of people doing crazy things, and it, like they're, they're usually the headlines like, humans are awesome. And then they like wear a squirrel suit and jump off a cliff and like fly next to the cliff <laughs> in the wind and like do some giant ski jump. And it just shows someone does like eight backflips, and it's like, wow, we really are. And, and I 
thoroughly believe that at, at the core of every single one of you, every single person in our town, this bag of meat and bones has this processor up here that can absorb a lot of things if it's treated well. And often it's mistreated and it's beaten down, ends up with self-chatter that like it makes it debilitated, maybe didn't get the right opportunity at a young age, and then this bag of meat starts to de degrade it on itself and becomes depressed, and it never really achieves what it's made to achieve. And the whole thing we built was this idea that can we make a system, a community, a family, where we say, rise up. Like this thing, it has more power than what you believe. And what do you want to do with it? What have you dreamed about doing with this? What kind of risk do you want to take that's calculated? And how can we do this together? How can we help you? Can we point you in some friends, mentors? Do you, if you're at the right point, your company's growing as a capital. What is it? And you might fail miserably. Awesome, try again. Keep going. And rise up and continue to iterate and build something of significance because you can go broke doing something you love or you can go broke doing something you hate. There are plenty of ways to make money in the world and just sit back and cruise, and there's other ways to live life fully. And so it really comes down to we want to help create a generation of people, a new economy, where we look at these macro trends in tech and go, that's mine. I'm going to latch onto that and go, we're going to build something awesome. And I don't know what seat on the bus you all fit on, but you fit on a seat on that bus economically. If it's marketing, if it's design, if it's engineering, if you're a CEO, if you're HR, as these companies grow and build, pay attention to what's going on around you. So my closing thing before we open up to questions is this. 2016 is buttoning up. Find some time. Take, take a note out of Charlie Nipp's book. Look back on 2016. Sit down, take some time, evaluate it, compare notes with your significant other or someone that you, is near and dear to you, and go, how did it go, 2016? What are the important things to us? Charlie's done this for how many years now with your family? 30, 30 years with his wife, that they get together at the end of each year or the beginning? Yeah. End. They run through the year, they look at the notes from the previous year and say, how do we do? Do that. Look at your year and figure out, all right, what do we need to adjust and tweak? And then looking into 2017, what are your goals you're gonna set for yourself? And I will encourage you in this, stretch yourself. Brad talks about this in the grade eight, we've created the circle and the eight activities that are what make up the grade eight, every day we try and challenge anybody who's been through it is you need to take a step outside of the circle. One of the eight, are you gonna have an activity that's outside of the circle to help you grow and become and stretch yourself? So next year, plan, think, who do you wanna be? What do you wanna do different? And it's not about money, it's not about success, it's about you living the life that you wanna flip and live. If you wanna be a janitor, be a flipping janitor, I don't care. Like, if that's what you've dreamed about doing, I would be ecstatic if that's what you got to do and that's what you love. It's about you achieving everything you dreamed that you were made for. So plan that. Go get it. You deserve it in 2017. And if you're too lazy to try and take some risk or ask some questions or you're too scared, you don't deserve it. And it's on you because we're here and we're willing to help. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, slow clap it out. Uh, <laughs> Any questions about 2016 or 2017 or, yes? So, AI, robotics, you know, we have all this problem with, you know, supporting our medical coverages. Yes. How do you see, I mean, I think there's opportunities there that basically these those two together will basically maybe make our healthcare system more fair. The question was AI, AI and robotics costs are kind of out of control, right? And so robotics and AI are starting to mesh into the healthcare world. And I couldn't agree more. It's one of the big spaces. Um, we're, we're on the cusp of being able to back up our brains. We're on the cusp of being able to insert robots into our blood. I already tell my kids that that's going to happen, by the way. And I don't pay my kids to do chores anymore because that's not the future economy. I make them do chores, but they don't get compensated for that. They get compensated for using their brain creatively for something I've asked them to do. So I think the world is changing rapidly, and when it comes down to the medical healthcare thing, we're gonna have robots, and I, I, I will have robots in my blood by the time I die. With that, I do think there's gonna be a period of time that this boutique insertion of AI and robotics into the healthcare system is gonna be exorbitant. It's gonna be expensive. 
and then it's going to crash and go down and become democratized quickly. Um, I, I think the AI around analyzing our health and the data information that's open source and kind of shared, we've already seen it with like doctor.com or whatever, look up your own disease. Half the time you go to the doctor and you're like, I have this, right? So it's kind of already there to where we're doing a lot of the anal analyzing. Um, I, I hope the costs drop because we choose to do preventative things, not only with our diet, um, but also figure out how to eradicate certain diseases. CRISPR is gonna be an interesting one to watch in 2017. I, I predict in 2017 we will use CRISPR on a human in the United States. Um, that's one where we can cut DNA change it by basically writing code, it's much more complex than that, push it back into the body, and then the DNA wraps back around it and the body absorbs it. There's a whole bunch of information around health and healthcare, you know, in this book. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, they're, they're talking about how, you know, we'll have sensors inside of us, and it will literally be able to, you know, then talk to a 3D printer and then, you know, literally give you the, the vitamins that you need the next day to run at your top performance. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's... <laughs> We're shifting from quantified self to optimized self. Exactly. That's been a phrase that's been kicked around quite a bit. So quantified self was great. We're, we're throwing off all this data. Think about how much data your body creates every single second. Think about a building. This building is pushing off data right now. And so we've been going through this thing of how do we quantify all the, the data, the heat, the electricity, the temperature in there, how many bodies are in here, and how do we handle that in the building? And then now it's gone from buildings to people, um, and we're moving into what do we do with that optimization of it so we can hack ourselves in some good ways. Um, I released a new thing. I do a thing called IC News. Um, once a week, roughly, we do a live video or a news segment. There's a company out of LA called Kernel, and uh, the gentleman invested $100 million in a kernel recently, and the idea is to insert neuroprosthesis into the brain to create superhumans. And they're starting to work on this. They've been able to insert memories into mice. Um, so a mouse that learned how to do a certain uh, map and find the cheese or whatever, they then took that memory mapping and inserted it into another mouse that found on the first time, and then they've set like, the, the, its control into another one, and it couldn't find it until like six times and they kept repeating it and it would find on the first time every time, and so they've been playing with stuff like that. Um, we're there, I don't know really what it means. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if it's good or bad. Um, but I do know it's coming, and I know that if I have cancer, and someone wants to crisper it out of my body, I'd probably prefer that than drinking chemical like antifreeze and trying to fry me. Sorry, that was weird, huh? Mr. Stone. <laughs> Appreciate all your help too, by the way. You've done a lot to build this community. So, uh, the question I have for you is, I believe personally that these, all these wonderful ideas don't go very far unless there's money behind them. Yeah. And you've raised, what, three million dollars? Just, just about two. Two. For Mountain Man. So, how do you get the people from the, the old guard, the extraction economy, yep. new money, the people at uh, the new golf courses here that have lots of money. Yeah. And how do you collect that money? Yeah. Because you know that all yep. the dreams that, that uh, Brad's dreaming takes money. Takes money. And you said earlier money wasn't important. Well, there's time yes, to, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, you're you're right. Is important. So just just as an example, 30 miles away, they just completed a 77 million dollar uh, sale. Yeah. And we get, six, uh, I think, eight out of ten uh, projects there, and we've all done really well. Yeah. Investment. And we can do that here. Yep. But how do you build that uh, corpus of your dollars yes. to where you can attract the bees to the honey? Yep. No, that's a great question. So, John's question, um, to recap it a little bit, is. Um, Basically, companies take, they need access to capital, right? Because most startups, 
you're not going to go in and be like, hey, I'm going to build a, a VR studio that's going to be the future of all horror films. And, and the bank's like, yes, let me give you a loan. Like, that's awesome, because you have no money and you're crazy. Um, and, and that just doesn't happen that way. And so at some point, there needs to be a way that we can create access to capital for ideas that are justifiable. And when you invest, you primarily look for a good team, and you look for the idea matters. I will be honest though, the team is more important than the idea. Because a good team, I'm convinced, a good entrepreneur, you could literally drop them in the middle of uh, some desert somewhere, they're gonna figure out a way to make it work. And so teams are very important, that's one piece, but we have good teams that are popping up around here. Liquid Robotics just got bought, that's another one. We have one of the co-founders of Liquid Robotics lives in town, here. huge exit. Great company, it's mapping the ocean floor. There's robots all over the ocean right now mapping the ocean and they're here. How do we get the access to capital? I will say one of the primary ways is this, is it's us continuing to accurately celebrate the successes and the failures of what's happening in this town publicly. So it's cocktail parties, newspaper articles, press releases, um, big events where people can see and engage with this new economy because it's hard when it seems so far away. Um, when Instagram sold for a billion dollars and never had made a penny, I don't know a single grandparent or parent who didn't look at their kid and go, go, go make an Instagrammer, right? Like they, they wanted to figure out this new world of technology and everyone's sitting on their money and they want to invest it. They're scared though because they haven't experienced the returns. And to be honest, a lot of people got hosed on some opportunities in this town. There's some that have happened around here. I know one that, I mean, I think doctors are notorious for being horrible venture capitalists and investors, by the way, uh, because doctors are very confident in their skill sets. I've read books about this. It's interesting chapters just on physicians because they've gone to school for so long, they know so much stinking stuff and they're really smart, which they are. They then go to invest into a company and they think they know everything about the next thing as well. And so in this town, a primary affluent community has made it on the extraction economy, tourism, real estate, and healthcare. And so as things are changing and as technology is eating all of those industries, they're going to, hopefully they're looking for ways to engage, I, I know they are, but they're gonna need to see some track record I think first. And those who are willing to take the risk accurately right now, Mr. Stone, are the ones who are gonna benefit the most on the tip of the spear. And everyone's gonna be begging to follow what you do next, which I believe is what's going to happen in this town very quickly. I think 2017, I've already talked to a lot of people at Gazer and BlackRock, and they're very interested. Um, we've got a very cool thing happening going on in this town, and there, you know about a lot of it as much as I do as well. There's a lot of interesting things afoot, my friend. And as those things continue to mature and develop, we won't let those things happen quietly under the, the, the guise of night, which is the problem, I would say, that there have been successful exits around here, but there hasn't been a platform to flip and celebrate it. And so for the first time ever, we can really step up and aggressively celebrate exits, things that are happening, and the success and failures. So that's my answer to that. Nice. Thank you. Um, and, and we are, um, starting to have those conversations. I've had someone that you know very well, who is very old model money and very established in this town go, we need to talk about what you're doing and maybe have you take some of our capital and figure out how to get in that stuff. Um, and it fits nothing to their portfolio, by the way. Yeah. Hey Nick, um, talking about the track record. Um, yes. I think in my experience, the biggest problem has been trying to find technologists to actually implement different ideas to actually get the track record and the traction. Um, yeah. And is Innovation Collective doing something to create like almost like a half stars model to mm -hmm. help develop coders to then, and other computer scientists to then yep. partner up with entrepreneurs to make things reality? Yes, so three strand code is something that we've been a big supporter of. That's a group of CTOs that have helped do little like hack schools that they've been putting on locally. There's a, um, an artificial intelligence meetup that started to happen out of Gravity Jack. They're looking at moving to Coeur d'Alene. I just had a meeting and a conversation with Gizmo that we're looking to start a robotics um, and coding school for kids. That'll go year round, not just in sprints. Um, we've been a big advocate and um, probably 
obnoxious, maybe, too, to, <laughs> to President Staben um, about the CS program and like how it needs to happen up here. And um, they, they believe in it, too. And they've, they've corrected past mistakes maybe the university didn't see to make the jump earlier up here. Um, so as much as humanly possible, traditionally, computer science program, we're, we're pushing that hard in NIC and CS, and we're trying to celebrate it as much as we can. Um, but we also know a lot of coders aren't traditionally trained. Um, they're alternatively trained. And so that's where little things like the code schools that we're working on. Um, I think it probably answers that to the best of my ability right now. Yeah? So, can I put in a plug? I'm sure you've heard, but I want to make sure everybody knows that the North Idaho STEM charter school is going to put away NASA to do a few stat. So, everybody needs to go to their Kickstarter and help fund it and tell their friends and their bosses. Yes. They need a bunch of money because they want to buy a space ready satellite. Yes. Yes, so there's a bunch of kids up in Roundstrom at the STEM Charter Academy that are launching a satellite into space. That's pretty cool. Um, they've worked really hard. They do have a, a GoFundMe or an Indiegogo or a Kickstarter. If you look it up, um, STEM Charter Roundstrom, you can throw five bucks or five million dollars at it. Or five thousand too, that's okay. Any range. Yes? So the question is, um, you know, how do I decide what books to read and then how many books do I read? So um, I'm a multitasker. Um, I probably go through, oh, I don't know, 30 or 35 books a year. Um, I primarily download them onto my smartphone and then listen to my workout. So, you know, so if you start listening to a book for an hour a day, it's just amazing how many books you can, can, can go through. Um, you know, I'm on a couple blogs, um, and so there's a couple blogs where people sit there and share some books and some book ideas, and um, and so anyway, that's probably where I get you know a lot of them, but but a lot of them also kind of lean together. I I really love reading about the brain. Um, you know, is it, it if you if you like the leadership part of this, I will tell you that uh, we spent a lot of time on mind chatter and the internal self-talk and how do we quiet your internal self-talk so that you actually feel um, compelled to do things outside the circle. And then really that's a big part of this whole thing is don't let your self-talk hold yourself back. And so that's a big part of the Leadership Academy. Yeah. We have time for one last question and then we'll wrap it up. Anybody have a weird question or a fun one? Sure, in the back. Yeah. CRISPR. CRISPR. Let's talk about that. Okay. I'm down. Um, mutants. mutants. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, so, if you don't know about CRISPR, um, we had the Human Genome Project, which was the first time that the human genome was mapped. That happened about, I think, seven, eight years ago ish. And then it went into kind of a dark period where we didn't really know what was going to come out of it. When it first happened, everyone was excited. And the thought was it's going to change everything. And then it didn't really change much. Um, but CRISPR is the first yet. And CRISPR is the first thing that's really come out, came out of it. Um, and the, the institute that did a lot of the work with CRISPR, uh, the professor behind it and the professor behind um, the Human Genome Project, I can't remember his name, but he has an awesome mustache. And he sings every year at the Milken Institute. And I've got to meet him multiple times. And he led that team. And I'm fascinated to see what's going to happen. The core areas where I think it's fabulous. If there are diseases in the world, um, they recently talked about being able to code HIV out of the body. That's awesome. Those are things that... I would argue if we have cancer and then they have found a way to technologically say, hey, let's splice this gene, push back this, it wraps it and gets rid of it, I, that's good. The idea that they're also talking about, like, you can have designer babies and you can have, like, change your eye color on the fly or, like, making muscular goats. That was literally an article I read. It's like, I don't know why we want muscular goats. But the problem with that becomes the flip side of the coin, right? Of 
humans are dumb sometimes. We do really stupid things once in a while. And I could see us doing some pretty poor things with CRISPR to where I, on IC News, I've made the joke, it's quite possible that in, you know, 15 years, we could have dating websites that are for like organic versus GMO humans. Like I haven't been CRISPR'd and like, please let's hook up. And like, I've been CRISPR'd. Um, we're the CRISPR pool over here. And everyone's like 6'4", and just like um, <laughs> But I also think at fashion shows, if that happened, I think you'd see like the guy who created a little design for his new like fall 2034 line. And he's like, I want a guy with male pattern baldness and a beer belly because everyone else is too perfect. And he like walks the aisle there, that's the new definition of beauty, who knows? Because um, we all look the same. So for us non crisp folks, we might be in luck. Um, so I guess I, all that to say, um, I'm hopeful that we can rise up with consciousness together as a people and put up the guardrails logically and continue to stand together as communities, as one, one nation, one tribe, and even, I don't believe, you know, even as the whole globe that we can make logical decisions to try and protect each other. You have your cultural things and your boundary lines, we have ours, but how do we operate as a, a, a community um, around things like CRISPR and AI um, and warfare? We've had to navigate nuclear weapons before and how do we handle those? So this isn't new territory for us, truly. Um, so I, I do think though 2017 we'll see a human CRISPR in the United States. They did the first one in China um, about five weeks ago. Um, do you have anything you want to say before we just shut you know, this party well, down I, and shift it? Yeah, I mean, I, I was going to answer John Stone's question. Um, you know, and, and, and I've had, you know... Brad's becoming a venture capitalist. Well, no, actually. I... <laughs> and that's how we're going to fix that problem. Well, I've been one for a while. <laughs> but... Um, you know, I mean, literally, uh, you, you can probably tell I'm pretty passionate about this movement. You know, I, I think we are still in the first inning. And and so, you know, and, and I know a lot of people have been skeptics. You know, like, well, what's going on? And gee, that's kind of cool and all that sort of stuff. And so, John, you know, I mean, other people in this room, you know, keep, tell the story. You know, tell the story. I mean, I, I heard a great quote that said that, you know, politicians don't make waves, they ride waves. You know, a community doesn't make a wave, it rides a wave. So if we're sitting here saying, guess what? Boom, think big, all right? Human flourishing, great aid, get the magic outside of you. I mean, that's a great message. Nobody gets hurt, nobody gets hurt. But I'll tell you what, you know, we do this year after year after year, you know, we talk about doing activities outside the circle. Just, you know, if we continue to build this community, uh, there's just a ton of magic. I, I think one idea can change a community for hundreds of years. I just think of the guy who, who formulated Coca-Cola, and he still is impacting Atlanta. I mean, not in a little way. I mean, in a major, major way. And, and so I, I just think we're smart enough and bright enough and good enough. And, and I, I Gosh just- Gosh darn it, people like us. And people <laughs> like us. No, but you know, I, hey listen, you know, we, we got something fun going on, embrace it. You know, let's just, let's make 2017 a lot of fun. Absolutely, best year ever. So with that said, um, that's the last Fireside Chat of 2016. Um, thank you. Another, another great year in the books. We will have our coffee and concepts um, next Wednesday morning at 7.30 in the morning. If you'd like to attend that. If you've never been, we talk about tech news that's happening right then and there that's current. We help each other with the concepts we're all working on. Um, and you're always welcome to work down at the 410 after that meeting. If you're interested in becoming a member of the collective and taking advantage of things like the summits and our private events we host, the free tickets, the books, the grade eight, um, all the different crazy things we do. You can talk to Nathan or Patrick or myself or Brad or Doug or Kenna and, and we can help kind of connect things up there. Um, lastly, 
have a great holiday season. Be nice to each other. Be nice to like your neighbors. Make them cookies. Um, build this into the town you want to live in for crying in the night. And show up to our next events. January, we have um, the CEO and founder of XCraft, uh, JD Claridge, who has going to have some really big news to share out of CES at the next fireside chat. I'll be interviewing him. And uh, bring a neighbor, bring like three neighbors. Continue, let's pop the seams of this place. And if you're not on our email list, go to innovationcollective.xyz. With that said, tip your bartender. Uh, we usually try to encourage like $10 for like to help cover the cost of the night. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. If you do, shame on you if you don't give it, um, if you can afford it. And do you guys have specials tonight? We usually have like a pizza special or something. No? Do we? Maybe? Is there like that? Usually like on a fireside chat night, we do like a half pizza. Mindy. Mindy, yes, yeah, special. Sure. There's no special tonight. So enjoy the, uh, the, the beer in the back and the wine. Apparently wine is special, according to my wife. Uh, I mean, so many things. Have a great night, and thank you for coming.